Hi again everybody. In today's video I've decided um, uh, to have uh, yet another teardown of uh, a laser rangefinder device. This time this is a uh, uh, small commercial off the shelf uh, uh, time of flight uh, rangefinder that is uh, um, it, this is a pretty old unit. It was designed uh, probably around uh, late 90s and this one is is um, uh, 20 uh, to 400 meter uh, range device designed primarily for uh, golfers and hunters. Uh, and it's made by Bushnell. I get it off eBay uh, very cheap because it uh, was sold as a non-working unit. I already opened it up, uh, looked around, uh, replaced the battery and I guess it was uh, just a case of a bad contact or something similar because I did manage to get it working. Uh, however, uh, the reason why I get it is just I needed a piece of... Uh, I was looking for a piece of optics that I needed in order uh, for my own project. And uh, so since I don't need the device itself, um, <coughs> I decided to to have a, a tear down and hence uh, making this video. So this is the data sheet that I found for uh, Bushnell a Yardage Pro 500. Uh, original unit was sold for two, uh, $239 uh, dollars according to this uh, uh, web page and uh, <coughs> We can see uh, the parameters uh, uh, shown here, which is uh, shows its capability. The minimum distance 20 meters and the maximum is 999 yards. Uh, the reflective, uh, uh, the tree surface uh, 500 yards. Well, I was actually pointing it to buildings and all sorts of reflective objects that I, I believe are reflective and I wasn't able to measure anything uh, which is beyond uh, 340, 380 meters um, and that's uh, well this is exactly the unit that we're going to look at. Uh, rangefinder is um, <coughs> working on a time of flight principle. Uh, there are different uh, rangefinder, also uh, a laser rangefinder, in particular units uh, that are uh, sold by uh, a Bosch uh, for uh, <coughs> more accurate and shorter distance measurements. Uh, those rangefinders are based on a phase difference, uh, where uh, the light from <coughs> the uh, laser is modulated by a uh, sine wave and by measuring the the phase difference between uh, the phase at uh, the the laser and the phase of the reflected signal <coughs> you can measure the distance of this um, the fact itself that it, it has uh, the minimum range uh, it's a dead giveaway that this is the time of flight range meter uh, another uh, I think you can say that this this device does not provide uh, a high accuracy that's usually um, uh, the phase difference uh, range finders are capable of <coughs> uh, let me give a quick overview about how um, most of the time of flight range finders work uh, I believe most of my viewers are already quite familiar with basic principles of how range finders work and uh, what uh, time of flight devices uh, uh, principles are based on. But uh, here I have um, I have to mention few details that uh, are c particularly relevant um, uh, to this uh, uh, range finder, which is which I have uh, I'm going to tear down right now. So most of the uh, range finders work on the following principle. So we have a laser diode that sends a pulse signal, uh, which is the, the short pulse of uh, laser signal that goes out in, into from the uh, range finder. And once it hits the object, the reflected signal then comes back and then detected by <coughs> uh, a photodiode. Uh, the device which usually used uh, in, in uh, uh, for detection of the signal is used uh, uh, called an avalanche photodiode. Um, this is a photodiode that uh, uh, works uh, uh, using the, an avalanche principle. It's capable of detecting very, very, very weak uh, uh, light signals as well as um, 
it also can generate uh, pretty sharp pulses that are necessary in order to uh, get the timing right. And here we have an example of, uh, for example, uh, uh, of uh, uh, basic uh, usual um, uh, detection circuit. Uh, we have an avalanche photodiode that's uh, reverse biased and uh, um, the bias that's applied uh, to the photodiodes is usually around 50 to 200 volts and um, it goes through uh, the current limiting resistor which is about uh, 1 mega ohm and <coughs> here we have a capacitor that's used in order to uh, provide uh, enough uh, a charge for this uh, avalanche uh, photodiode so that when it detects the incoming pulse it can generate have enough uh, energy to generate the pulse um, afterwards this pulse a short uh, current signal uh, is then multiplied uh, amplified by uh, transconductance amplifier uh, as uh, shown in this diagram here <coughs> and uh, it converts the incoming current into the, the, the short uh, voltage pools. Uh, the problems that we <coughs> encounter in this case is of course the fact that we never know uh, how reflective is the remote surface or uh, how sharp or how um, uh, um, what power of reflected signal we're going to uh, receive back uh, in this case if we see uh, we can uh, we can either get a small signal or we can get something. Well, I'm showing it's in a negative, so which something is quite bigger. And you can see here is that if we uh, trying to <coughs> just detect the threshold, right, like that, uh, depending on how powerful is the reflected signal that we receive back, there will be small error. But um, because we're using the, the light as uh, the time of flight for the, uh, for the light in the, in the medium, in the air in our case, this uh, the, the light travels very fast. So this, uh, <coughs> these differences can, uh, can mean actually meters uh, when we convert it, uh, uh, taking into consideration that speed of light is very, very high. Um, so what kind of uh, tricks that uh, designer of the time of flight device need to uh, need to use in order to make uh, the measurements uh, more or less accurate one of the problems that um, um, uh, you may also encounter um, when you design a time of flight uh, uh, rangefinder like this is uh, uncertainty of the launch time Let's say if you have a laser diode, like uh, I've shown on this diagram, uh, which is uh, like say, same as here. Um, actually, this one is, is, is bigger. So what we have uh, here is that uh, we send a uh, the, the short pulse into uh, the, um, uh, the pulse laser diode. This laser diode is usually different from the, the ones that used for uh, phase difference range meters <coughs> with respect that they're capable of generating um, a high uh, power laser signal for a short duration of time, which is usually, um, I mean, usually uh, in most of the, of the data sheets I've looked at, these devices are capable of 20 nanosecond uh, pulses. Uh, and uh, around uh, 50, 70 watt, uh, the one I, I actually tried to uh, use myself in my own design, which was a 70 watt uh, a device. Uh, what important here is that <coughs> there is a big uncertainty of, uh, from in timing from the time that we send the pulse uh, signal into the uh, diode, uh, laser diode assembly, uh, to the time when actually the, the laser pulse actually leaves the, the rangefinder at the lens. So, so if, we, if we say, well, here's the, here's, the, here's the electrical signal, here's the electrical pulse that we sent into laser diode laser assembly, and it travels along the, the circuitry somewhere around here, and then by the time we generate a laser pulse signal, there is a big uncertainty. Uh, to eliminate this uncertainty, uh, what is usually done is that we have another uh, uh, semi-transparent mirror 
uh, positioned in a path of this laser diode and uh, <coughs> this mirror reflects a uh, small part of this signal into another detector uh, which is uh, is then and the signal from this detector is then used at as the, the, the start time uh, which is the, the the time of launch of the signal um, once this signal reflected back then we process uh, uh, the reflected signal and by <coughs> calculating the difference between this and this pulses the uh, timing difference between these two, two, two pulses we can then uh, uh, calculate the distance to the object um, again as I mentioned before uh, this is all optics. Uh, optics usually more expensive than electronics and for that simple reason um, this <coughs> optics are, are cheaper than um, in our case if we would like to for example um, make an optics that will uh, use the same detector for both uh, signal reflected from the remote object and signal that is being um, Uh, reflected off the wall uh, or special re reflector inside the rangefinder in our case like that so if we send a, uh, if we have this is a diode laser it sends the, the laser pulse down it reflects off this mirror like that and then it comes back reflects again and then goes into uh, um, a detector positioned next to this so these kinds of optics are usually more expensive and but this they provide better um, uh, accuracy uh, because uh, <coughs> the uncertainties or uh, that the timing from the time we send the, the pulse to generate the, uh, the, the, the lasing pulse uh, for to the time when we get uh, the the, the a signal back are, are uh, less important in this and then uh, these differences are much higher in this design uh, because obviously we have uh, some electrical electronic circuitry that's involved and two different sensors uh, they can vary with temperature and so on and if we using only a, a electronic uh, difference like in this case if we only measure the, the time difference uh, from the pulse that we sent out to the uh, diode laser <coughs> and the, the the pulse that we get uh, back after processing reflected signal of course this accurate this will be the less accurate this will be more accurate and this will be even more accurate <coughs> uh, what I expect uh, to see in this uh, in this rangefinder um, I'm not quite sure uh, but I believe this one is is using the the least accurate uh, uh, design in our case. Uh, the the big uh, military uh, rangefinder that I um, uh, I turned down uh, in my last video uh, used a uh, little bit different principle, uh, which is uh, similar to this, where they have um, uh, a. a PIN diode, a sensitive um, photo diode uh, that was detecting uh, uh, a signal, a reflected light of a, a tiny pin that was um, protruding right into the well of the of the um, the pulse laser. Uh, so if, if we instead of a mirror uh, they use a, a small needle that was uh, <coughs> right on the way of this uh, of the laser it wouldn't block the all of the light it would just uh, just a tiny portion of it and uh, uh, once the laser signal was uh, uh, was traveling through the um, through the well parts of it were reflected and detected by uh, by by a sensor and that was uh, used as a as a, um, a time of launch in our case so let's um, uh, take this uh, device apart and see what's inside
Ta-da! Well, this one was very easy to to take apart. Uh, only four screws uh, on the, on sides right here. Let me actually try to get a uh, better focus on this uh, on this device. Um, <coughs> I found on my previous videos I actually uh, um, moved the object, <laughs> the subject of the of the video quite <coughs> a lot out of the out of the uh, the, the view. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <coughs> so um, what we see here is this is the this is the. Uh, um, um, uh, a viewfinder. This is a lens. I think this one provides quite a lot of zoom. I think it's about x36 uh, uh, zoom, uh, but it's not adjustable, so you can't you can't uh, adjust the focus on this one. Uh, but it, it does work uh, quite well uh, for the uh, for the nominal distance, which is as soon as you have your object in in a measurable distance, which is uh, 20 meters to 400 meters. Um, those objects are quite well in focus, <coughs> and uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. But um, well, obviously uh, there is an LCD display uh, that uh, is used uh, that you can see uh, in a viewfinder that uh, shows. Uh, the distance and the status of your of your uh, distance measurement, um, as well as uh, it uh, provides some extra information and allows you to to see, for example, change the setting uh, for uh, the 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 rain uh, shows the the strength of the signal um, reflected back and so on. So there is an LCD display that designed particularly exactly for this unit. And um, there's a there's a flex uh, flex cable that uh, uh, the signal goes right in. Um, what I can see right away. So this is this is uh, two uh, two um, separate boards uh, right here on the right and one on the left. Uh, this board. Uh, I'm sure. Okay. Now I forgot. Uh, well, this this board uh, must be um, a sensor board, and this one is a laser diode board. Um, what I also notice is that uh, these boards are being um, epoxied. Uh, That's not an epoxy; it's a uh, silicone. So they've been uh, they've been screwed on to the uh, to the frame of the of this uh, of this to this plastic frame, and then had some uh, silicone gunk applied uh, so that um, and they stay put in place. So that creates a problem. So if I actually unscrew this, then it will be hard to. Um, to put it back together in a, in a way that uh, so so that they are exactly in the same uh, allocation, um, then it will be misaligned, unfortunately. But uh, well, I don't I don't really need this, so I'm guess I'm, I'm gonna do that anyway and see. Uh, so also you can see um, a lots of shielding on uh, on both uh, boards. Um, the, the laser diode and the sensing board uh, both are shielded on uh, on both sides uh, here and here. So this is uh, uh, a double-sided board, and the uh, same as uh, same as this one. And then you can see that uh, all uh, um, all the circuitry inside uh, are been heavily shielded. So. The most interesting uh, stuff are, of course, in on this on these boards. At least for me, uh, the way I see it. <laughs> so instead of uh, trying to kill my eyes, I actually went 
and check the, this side of the board under a microscope. So what I found here is um, um, three 74 series devices. One is, um, uh, this is 80, 80 bit uh, shift register. Another one is a uh, D type flip flop. And then we have a Schmidt trigger right here. Another Schmidt trigger uh, made by Motorola is underneath there. And uh, here is a precision O pump. And then uh, there's a 2951 um, uh, voltage regulator as well as a, a LM. Uh, 393D, uh, that's a, I believe that's a, a comparator. So before I take this board off and see what's on the other side, I'm going to try to power it up and see what kind of voltages we get coming in, going into this, uh, into these devices, um, into this uh, daughter boards right here. Oops. Okay, so. Obviously nothing is. Nothing is here until I press this button, which is, uh, well, this button um, uh, starts the measurement and uh, you can see it. Uh, this is the, this is the, this is the button. Uh, the round button on the on the body of the of the the rangefinder. Okay, nothing interesting. Nothing interesting. Okay, so this one is one twenty three volts. This one is five volt. And this one is okay. So on pin number one, we have a forty-two volt signal coming into this um, into this board. Uh, um, interesting. Uh, so forty-two volt uh, sounds too low uh, to be a bias uh, for the for the diode. Uh, if it's an avalanche for the diode, but uh, there are inter dif the different devices are different. Well, we have uh, 53 volts going into into this uh, pin number two right here. Okay, let's take a look at uh, let's see what's on the other side of this board. <laughs> Ta-da! Well, <laughs> there's nothing much on this side of the board. Uh, uh, just uh, some um, uh, passives, a uh, bunch of passives. Uh, very, very nice uh, uh, film capacitor uh, right here. I think uh, this is a film capacitor um, by just by just looks of it because it has a silvery sort of uh, shine to it and. Uh, here is, um, I think uh, this is this is a, a, a twenty-two micro Henry uh, inductor or something like that. And uh, another interesting uh, thing is, um, and this one, uh, this board uh, appears to be manufactured. Uh, uh, by in Canada, uh, it's uh, it's 9272. I guess that's not a, a date, 
Invatronics MFG Canada, Invatronics manufactured in Canada. So, um, <laughs> looking at this uh, at this at this rangefinder, I can see that uh, this one it says, uh, what does it say? This uh, this one says it's uh, as, um, assembled in USA, uh, made in Canada, <laughs> and uh, uh, turned down again and back in Canada. <laughs> uh, well, they used to make things in the US and Canada uh, in, in uh, 1999, especially electronics, and um, I would say that the quality of the board is 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 very impressive. Uh, it's, well, before I take it further apart, I wanted to uh, I wanted to assemble it back together and see and find a way to actually measure uh, to capture the signals uh, on the board if it's actually uh, measuring the real distance. Uh, um, so for that reason, I need to figure something out. All right, I'm at my uh, <coughs> soldering table. So what I've figured out, what I can do now is I can. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take this. Uh, as you can see this uh, this this cover has uh, has these buttons right here. So um, I believe this one is uh, mounted like that. Oh, I'm not sure. Anyway, so I'm gonna use this hole uh, to put some uh, uh, solder some leads <coughs> uh, to. Uh, to this um, right to these connectors and then um, <coughs> I'm going to put uh, let the uh, run this leads uh, through uh, through this hole on the top of, of the cover so that I can then uh, connect my oscilloscope while the, uh, the case is uh, completely closed. So I have connected uh, the the leads from my oscilloscope um, uh, to the wires that I've soldered uh, to the um, uh, the ribbon cables so that send uh, uh, connected directly to the daughter boards inside uh, this uh, range meter, and I pointed it um, to the building in front of. Um, of my window and uh, <coughs> when I looked through the, uh, the viewfinder I, I clicked a button and uh, I found out that uh, the distance to the building in front of my window is about 170 meters well I said about because I still don't think this one is very accurate however the, the, the distance that this device shows is uh, 170 meters so here I have uh, the, like I said, the top yellow line is um, is the signal from the the sensor boards, and here I have a, a strong a pulse, and uh, which is this uh, 59, about well, 60 nanosecond pulse that's uh, generated, which always. Uh, coincide with the pulse sent to the laser diode, uh, which is the blue line <coughs> below, and it's been delayed. Uh, let me see, by about twelve uh, nanoseconds, um, so that the about 12 nanoseconds uh, between the the signal that uh, 
is sent to the 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 laser diode board uh, to send the the, the pulse, and from the the beginning of the uh, the launch pulse, or so should I call it, at uh, the sensor board. What I found is that <coughs> approximately one of the ten. Um, pulses that uh, this uh, rangefinder sends, uh, one out of ten will result in a signal which is um, which spans uh, the maximum uh, um, strength. Uh, basically, it goes up to um, to about well, three volts. Uh, so basically, this. This uh, this reflected signal is the only one that uh, that uh, rangefinder will count uh, as um, as a successfully reflected one, and will ignore everything else. And I believe that when it uh, uh, shows the 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 status bar, which indicates the strength of a reflected signal, uh, that's what it actually uh, shows is is the height of this uh, this spike. So. Despite the fact that <coughs> there are many spikes returned back, only the ones that are um, strong enough, which are this, uh, have been used to measure actual difference. And the rest of them are actually used to uh, measure the strength or reflectivity of the, of the object uh, that it's trying to uh, measure distance to. Uh, point uh, the rangefinder to a building which is right behind the, the first one. Uh, I previously measured the distance to it, which is uh, 226 meters. If I repeat this procedure, okay, miss, miss, hit. Okay, so yes, that's true. This is a 1.5 uh, microsecond interval between these two strong pulses, and I can see uh, 1.5 uh, microseconds uh, divided by 2 because we have a round trip uh, multiplied by speed of light and we get and we get 224 meters uh this is this is this is pretty accurate so here i have taken a cap of uh, one of uh, of the uh the laser diode board and uh, there you go surprise surprise ztx h53 actually two of them um, two avalanche um, uh, transistors uh, these avalanche transistors usually used to uh, to generate uh, sharp pulses i have removed the shields from both sides and um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to um, uh, take high resolution photos of this uh, this board on, on both sides and I am going to use the, the pictures that I get in order to um, recover the schematics out of this and um, hopefully then I can uh, get complete schematics of this board it uh, should be very fairly easy since uh, there aren't that many things going on here well I've looked online again and um, what it looks like that this uh, this uh, I was mistaken I was <laughs> I was guess I guess too excited uh, these are not um, avalanche transistors um, uh, what I was uh, thinking of was uh, uh, a ZTX four one five avalanche mode transistors um, these are usually uh, used to uh, uh, generate sharp pulses. But these are uh, regular um, uh, high current uh, transistors uh, from uh, diodes um, incorporated. Um, and 
the, the model of this is a uh, ZTX853. Um, just a, a, a pair of regular transistors, uh, high current transistors, and these are used to switch uh, 53 volt um, supply uh, to this uh, uh, diode laser right here. Uh, looks like things are much, much, much more simpler and benign <laughs> than I expected. Um, in the Okay, I'm gonna put it back together, see if it still works. Oops. I've looked at uh, the laser diode board, uh, now let's take a look uh, what we have on the sensor side. So I've taken some uh, high resolution photos. Uh. On the receiver board we can see that all components uh, but uh, the photodiode itself are uh, located on a single side of the board. So the main component on this board is Max uh, Maxim Max 913 ultra fast precision TTL comparator uh, that is capable of uh, a 10 nanosecond operational speed and that kind of speed that you probably uh, require for in order to to uh, eliminate the errors due to the uh, slow erase time uh, for reflected signal so let's uh, take it back together again and hope it will still work <laughs> Uh, here is the data sheet for um, ZTX853 uh, a, a transistor, high current transistors. Uh, there's a there's couple of those I found on uh, the laser diode board. Um, uh, what was surprising is not what I found on this laser diode board, uh, uh, on the transmitter board, is what I didn't find. When I was talking about another device, uh, which is uh, ZTX415, uh, which is specifically designed for high, high speed uh, for uh, post generators and uh, suitable for single series in parallel operation. And uh, this one is <coughs> specifically designed for avalanche mode transition. And uh, these ones are, I guess, are used in uh, a more high end models uh, where you require uh, uh, sharper, uh, more powerful pulses uh, for the longer range. And this um, this application knows explains how uh, the 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 avalanche mode uh, transistors used for in order to generate uh, the high. Um, uh, high uh, uh, power pulses and uh, <coughs> here is an example for example uh, the high current pulse uh, generated for laser LEDs and this is what I was expecting to see inside this rangefinder and that's why I was saying it's surprising what I didn't find rather than I was surprised by what I found well that's uh, all for this teardown video uh, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you back soon Bye.